Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Pop OS 21.04 with the Cosmic Desktop. And before we get started, just want to remind you, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you can be entered into the ASUS ZenBook 14 giveaway that we are doing on August 31st, 2021. When we first get into Pop OS, you're going to be met with this screen, which says install Pop OS 21.04, but we're not going to install. I'll show you how we can do this in a demo mode. So we want to go ahead and select English, select the United States, select English on the keyboard, and default on the keyboard. And when you get here, it'll say clean install or custom install. If you go down here, it says try demo mode. Just click on that and you're in. Now. This is a very beautiful distribution. It's probably one of the best desktops on Linux at present. You start off with a very beautiful background. Now what's great about Pop is they're known for having awesome wallpaper. So the first thing I wanna do is go and change the background and see what we have that's a little different and less bright for me. Let's go background. And these are all the wallpapers you'll see down here out of the box right off the bat and I want to pick one I think I'll go with that one all right there we go so the first thing we want to take a look at is you see up on your top toolbar you got workspaces applications you've got your calendar and your time right here and then of course you've got your internet connection battery and your speaker over here if you come down here you've got show launcher you've got show workspaces now right here you've already got a workspace button up here and you've got workspaces down here so we may play around with that a little bit and see if we can change some things up you got your show applications firefox you've got your files you've got terminal you've got your pop shop which is their applications you've got install pop os and then you've got settings okay first things first let's go into settings and see just what we can change here right off the bat on desktop you've got general uh this right here pressing the super key opens the launcher that is on so if you're into a program or you're in firefox and you need to bring the launcher up you just hit the super key which is the windows key obviously it'll bring up the launcher workspaces pressing the super key opens the window and workspaces or application pressing the super key opens the application overview so you can assign what your super key does hot corners you can enable your top left hot corner for workspaces it's off at moment but if you went up there and see how that highlights if you hit that with your mouse it'll automatically open up your workspaces top bar we've got workspaces here we've got workspaces there now it says right here show workspaces button I can actually click that off and the workspaces disappear I've got my applications menu down here where I can click on it and it brings up my applications and I also have it up here so I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off and then date and time and notifications position I can leave them here or if I want to seeing how I've got rid of those buttons over there I can just click here and move it over to the left and now I have my calendar and everything to the left and then I have this center over to the right so window controls show a minimize button it does have a minimize button but like we've said in past videos you can show shut that off and all you have to do is double click to open it all the way up or double click to minimize that is your personal preference background we've already changed appearance it comes out of the box in dark mode you can obviously switch it over to light mode and that's where you'll be at what I want to do is I want to go ahead and stick with dark mode because that's my preference dock now you can enable the dock or you can get rid of the dock you can just shut it off right here and it goes away and if you leave your application and workspace buttons up here all you got to do is use those if that's what you prefer but I'm going to go ahead and leave the dock on it says extend dock to the edges of the screen you can see you've got a full big bar down here I kinda don't like that so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn that off now you had your application launcher that we had up here your applications we took that off because we have them down here but what we want to do is if you don't want the applications down here and you want to keep that up there just click that off and the application launcher will disappear but we're gonna go ahead and turn it back on show workspace icons in dock we've got that show applications icon in dock we got that show mounted drives in the dock so if you mount a USB drive or an extended hard drive or external hard drive you plug it in it'll automatically show it down here in the dock dock visibility you can have it always visible no matter what application you open up or you can have it always hide so if you open up the application it'll duck away 
and your workspaces. You can have dynamic workspaces, automatically remove any empty workspaces, fix number of workspaces. If you want to go down here, you can click that up and you can affix that number to two, to four. Heck, if you want to do it to eight on a dual monitor situation, you can. Multi-monitor behavior, workspaces span displays, which means you can take a workspace from here, slide it over to a different display, and it'll go over there. Or you can keep workspaces on your primary display only. Placement of the workspace picker, you can have it along the left side or along the right side. That's your choice. Now, if we go back over here, you do have network notifications, applications where you can go in and set your notifications up on applications. And then that way, you know how you want it to handle things, okay? You can set it up with archive manager, calculator, calendar, character map. I mean, all of your applications are here and you can set up specific notifications for each one. Privacy, connectivity checking is used to detect connection issues. That's fine. Location services, location services is turned off. I usually keep everything on location services turned off. But if you want to turn it on, all you got to do is come up here and switch it on and you're good to go. And what I do like about this is when you do turn it on, it'll tell you right here, you're using Mozilla's location services, but no applications have asked for permission for location services. If they do, you will be prompted. So you can, at that point, you can either give them access or deny it. Your Thunderbolt, file history and trash. You can go in here and set file history duration forever or 30 days, seven days, one day, however you want to set that up. Or if you don't want it to keep file history, you can turn it off. But forever, if you've got files, computer seems to be lagging a little bit, slip on over here, hit clear history, and it'll take them all out. Trash and temporary files, you can set this up to when you put something in the trash, it is automatically deleted. You don't have to manually go delete it. And automatically delete temporary files. You can do this. If you're like me, you're going to be checking these things anyway. So I wouldn't leave it on automatic just to be safe. And then screen lock. Yeah, you've got blank screen delay, automatic screen lock, lock screen on suspend, show notifications on the lock screen. So let's back up out of here. And then you have all your basic Linux settings that you're going to get with a Linux distribution. So let's close out of that. Let's go down here and let's see the apps that we have. Out of the box, we have Calculator, Calendar, Contacts, Files, Firefox Browser, Gparted, Geary. You've got Install Pop OS. It comes with LibreOffice. you got the Pop Shop, which is your applications where you can download and install applications. Your settings, which we just went through. Your system, you can open this up. You've got language support. Startup applications, if you got applications that you don't want to start up when you boot into your computer, you can actually uninstall or get them off of the startup part. You've got disk usage analyzer, you've got disks, passwords, power statistics, and then you've got your system monitor. We're going to take a look at that real quick because I've only assigned it two CPUs and two gigabytes of RAM because I wanted to see how it operates on uh, lower spec machines. So we'll go to resources. As of right now, we're using about 5% of our CPU, and you're, we are running at 1.2 gigabytes of the 2.2 gigabytes I have assigned to it. So let's close out of that. Let's go back over here. And then you've got utilities. On your utility, you've got Eddy. It comes with USB flasher. Let's say you've already got Pop! OS installed, and you want to check out a different Linux distribution. You just download that ISO, plug in your USB, go into the USB flasher, and you're ready to go. You've got your character map, you've got a document viewer, you've got an image viewer, text info, extensions, archive manager, fonts, screenshot tool, videos, show launcher, show workspaces, document scanner, and help. So that's what you're getting out of the box. Now, let's back out of here. Let's take a look in files. There is your file manager. If you Notice over here, you cannot move these, so those are locked in place. If you do want to make your folders bigger, you just drop down, and you can bump them up, and then you have bigger files, so it's easier for you to read, if that's what you want to do. And let's go take a look at the Pop Shop. Okay, we are now in the Pop Shop. Now, one thing I do like about the Pop Shop is I like the general layout. It's definitely a, a very good-looking app store. Um, you can go up and do a search here or you can go down and pick a category and go in that category and see what you want to find. Um, I'm going to try just a standard search here. Let's do OBS Studio and it pops right up. Even in a live virtual machine environment, 
Um, what you will notice sometimes is when you're using something in a virtual machine, it won't update the shop so you can look at things. It'll just tell you it's got to load them. Let's go do Caden Live. There's Caden Live. So pretty much all the applications that you want, you can pull right out of the pop shop. Now over here, you've got settings. You got your official sources, which of course Pop! OS is based on Ubuntu, so it's gonna pull from the Ubuntu repositories, which are solid repositories and you can trust them. Community maintained software is on, proprietary drivers for devices is on, and software with copyright or legal restrictions is on. Now, if you don't wanna use proprietary software, you can uncheck these and you won't have to worry about those showing up in the store. Updates, it'll tell you right here, it's gonna search for important security updates, recommended updates, and unsupported updates. Extra sources, you do have extra sources over here. You've got Pop! OS applications, which is gonna come directly from the Pop! OS proprietary repositories. And then you've got your Launchpad, System76, Pop! Ubuntu repository. Then you can set up flat packs. It's already in. So you, when you do a search for software, it's going to pull it from Ubuntu repositories, Pop! OS repositories, or flat packs. If there's more than one option, if there's one on Ubuntu or there's a flat pack, I recommend going with the Ubuntu. If there's a Pop! OS versus a flat pack, I recommend going with the Pop! OS. If you've got a piece of software out there that's not in either one of the repositories, you can go to flat pack and you'll be good to go. Let's go to terminal. Let's do a quick and see if it comes with HTOP, and it does not. Let's see if it comes with TOP. It does come with TOP. Right now it says there's 863 megabytes of RAM being used, and 915 in the buffer cache, and 294 free. So, running this on a two CPU system with two gigabytes of RAM, it's very smooth. It is very smooth. And you do have Geary Mail. Uh, open up Geary Mail. It's a very good looking email client. One of the things I don't like about Geary Mail is the simple fact that it will not load remote images without you approving it. There is no setting where you can go in and just say allow remote images. I've got three different email accounts so it's kind of frustrating sometimes when you get emails and it says do you want to open this image and you click yes always for this sender but it seems like it's a continuing thing. I just like to plug it in and go but if that doesn't bother you, Geary Email is definitely a very beautiful and sleek looking email client. General Overview Pop! OS is a very beautiful Linux distribution. Uh, if you're coming over from Windows or Mac, I think it's definitely something you need to take a look at. I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you would, please like and subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything and you can always unsubscribe later. It also gets you entered into the ASUS ZenBook 14 giveaway that we are doing on August 31st, 2021. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next video.